Hello everybody, my name is Brian, also known as Bray80O, and when you're back playing some Mass Effect, this is Road to Mass Effect 4 Andromeda on Insanity Mode, the hardest 60 level on this game, doing our Reagan A playthrough. Last episode we completed the Pharaoh's mission, and now we're going to talk to our crew members. Uh, hey Commander, next time we touch down, let's try not to park the ship in a colony of mutant zombies. Just thinking out loud here. Alright. I have to go. Alright, see ya. <laughs> and that was the new conversation we had. <laughs> Alright, on to the next one. <laughs> Alright, let's talk to Caden, and then we'll go on talk with uh, Liara. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Why is Thoughts? she so sweaty? Well, they know about the stone <laughs> you've had from the council. She looks so sweaty. Those communications are classified, Lieutenant. She looks so sweaty, oh my yes, god. <laughs> she does. But you know the Navy grapevine. They're on your side. They're pissed about the resistance we're getting, especially from our side. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Another L2 flare up. Is this going to be a problem? No, Commander, it'll settle down. It's rough sometimes, but they spike higher than a lot of L3s. Except for you, of course. Besides, I fared a lot better than some after Kinetics was through. You distrust them that much. You know the records about the biotic trading out on Jump Zero? They're all classified. Because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link Biotics and Ezo. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own limbs. And their choice of teachers didn't help much. The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think. Asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. Well, the Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. Get your knuckles wrapped a few times, Lieutenant? Yeah, you could say that. Our instructor was a Turian by the name of Commander Vernus. A real hard ass. <laughs> he basically had a free pass to break us if it would turn out a decent biotic. Kind of spiral from there, Commander. Sounds like a classic drill instructor to me. The ones at the Makapa boot camp were brutal. Vernus didn't just push us because it was effective training. He liked it. Anyway, this is ancient stuff. I walked it off a long time ago. I should get back to my duties, Commander. We're here to make history, not rehash it. What's your opinion on the last mission? I'm glad there aren't many aliens like the Thorian. I don't think my stomach could take it. <laughs> Out of a deal you worked out with John, though. <laughs> if I ever get a speeding ticket, I want you to be my advocate. Just nope, trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. I've wasted enough of your time for yeah, now, I know. Commander. I know. We'll, we'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Yes. Alright, let's go talk with Liara now. I already talked with her. She doesn't have the new new dialogue at all. But she does. Hey, Liara. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? No. I just want to talk. Of course. <laughs> I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. Mm -hmm. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. That's insulting. So you saw us as some kind of joke? As I said, I was ignorant about your species. But I have been watching you and your crew. I feel as if I have learned a great deal. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. 
It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. You're basically saying we bully other people to get our way. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is how most of the galaxy sees you. I understand why they think that way, though I don't necessarily agree with them. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. I don't care what the rest of the galaxy thinks about us. But you should. The Council made you a Spectre because of what they saw in you. You are special, Commander. You represent the best of what humanity can offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did on Torfin. I cannot even imagine how horrible that must have been, but you did what had to be done. Now you're digging into my past, invading my privacy. I am sorry. I know it was wrong, but after our last conversation, I was too embarrassed to approach you directly. I was afraid I would say something stupid again. I wanted to know more about you, to understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Want to believe that? Me or the beacon? Unacceptable. Eh, well, let's just go with... <laughs> You're interested in me let's because of my one. visions. You just want to know more about the Protheans. I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. <laughs> I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Delenko. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah. We could romance Caden or Liara. Caden's special. That's not serious. That's private. You're a female. Let's make her jealous. How about let's do a cat fight? Well, you know, Caden's. Let's go with that. I care about Caden. A lot. <laughs> I thought so. Still, I feel as if there is also some attraction between us, Shepard. You were wrong. There is. You're right. There is something between us. <laughs> I knew it. And I knew you felt it, too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? Because I'm a redhead. We have only known each other a short too. time. <laughs> we are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. This makes no sense. We have one thing in common. Saren wants both of us dead. That's something. <laughs> that is not the most romantic reason, is it? No. You make it all sound so dangerous. That's why it's fun. A little danger makes things exciting. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. You started it. <laughs> I wasn't the one who brought this up. I know. I'm sorry. But I did not think it would get so... Please, let's just talk about something else. <laughs> I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. She wants the di- Wait, um... Shit. <laughs> talk with Rex. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Such as? Such as? I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared. One of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. To stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding, at least for one generation. 
and for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes, a meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well... There are some laws that even we hold sacred. Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. So long, Rex. Shepard. You're so good. You're so dangerous, Rex. Wait, hold up. Shepard. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You trying to make me cry, Shepard? No, maybe. <laughs> I've got some unfinished business with my family, but that's all. What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Who has it? Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods, all fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. All right. So long, Rex. Shepard. That's one new side quest there. What up, Ash? Commander? It's been a long time since I talked to her, seriously. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One-on-one? -on -one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Caden. Mm -hmm. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? Fraternization is against regulations, ma'am. Don't ask, don't tell. What's up? He didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Uh -huh. Chief. Should you be that casual with your commanding officer? Sorry, Commander. Too much in the family mindset. My sisters and I have always been close. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. After helping raise them, your sisters still talk to you? <laughs> Amazing. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like a story. You like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did, Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. And boys, no control. You ask me, boys need a cold shower that lasts from age 12 to 25. <laughs> they have their uses, ma'am. Not all of them keep their brains in their pants. True. Mike thought he'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing Mom and Dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. 
Sarah couldn't have been fond of you escorting her. Embarrassed the hell out of her. But it was worth it in the end. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. She cracked him in the face. Good. <laughs> when he swung, she just... She wasn't there anymore and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was going to end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. That was pointless. Now you were right about one thing. That wasn't interesting. And what was your father during all this? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Bored now. Is the rest of your life story this dull? <laughs> Not everyone can bust up a slaver ring on their first tour, Commander. Some of us just live ordinary lives. Oh, uh, she's Dad just a bitch. Dad passed on a few years back. <laughs> He's probably still watching, though. Yeah, sure he is. He's not a zombie, is he? <laughs> you know, from heaven, wherever that is. Uh. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Your beliefs are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. I appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. What's your opinion of the last mission? Gotta admire those colonials. That's about the worst place for a colony I've ever seen. Given the option, I'd get the hell out of Dodge. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. All right, let us go. Let's talk with Giddies. Commander, good to see you. You've been with C-Sec a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts, organs mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. So what was it? Both, actually. But it took us a while to figure that out. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab, hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. For fuck's sakes! Somebody's making a killing out there. What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Good thinking. 
Lackeys are always easier to scare. Exactly. Though in this case it paid off in a different way. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Saleon's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. So he was growing spare parts in his own employees? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden so nobody could see it. I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Patton and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they'd died by now anyway. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart, his idea of a joke, I guess. <laughs> I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon, I want to be there when you find him. Got it. And there, another mission right there. Yay. Alright, let's go tech with Telly. The last one. And I'll be done. Oh, hello, Shepard. <laughs> I could be more of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like I need this. <laughs> no, this time, cause last time we did this, we 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 she was about to talk to us, but then we freaking ignored her, and that was it. But let us actually talk with her this time. Are you okay? Let's not I be a know. total bitch this your time. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of place. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? You'll get used to it. But it's more than just the silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. I need my crew to be in top form. I can't have you daydreaming about going home. Don't worry, Shepard. I know what's at stake. If we don't stop Saren, I won't have a home to go back to. I'll be ready when you need me. I should go. See you later. Alright. Alright, and that is it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Next episode, we're gonna do both of the both of the side quests that we got, uh, Rex and Garrus's quest. So that's one thing we're gonna do, and probably do some other stuff. Let's see here. Uh, probably do wanna probably do wanna do this these I guess. Yep, we got some new stuff here. 
next episode we're probably gonna do all these side quests and then next episode we're probably gonna go and do this one because this is gonna be a blast <laughs> all right guys see you guys next time later